name is Zulu Mink, and the new rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you are notified when new videos drop in. Uh, this is not live, ladies and gentlemen. I do apologize, it's not live. I am, uh, right this moment, a bronze and list, I would have thought. Actually, probably asleep by now, probably asleep. It's the Jewish holiday of poor event. Boy, can I only hope, can I only hope the energy of Purim, which is an inversion of evil to good, right? Uh... It, it before one's eyes, it instantaneously uh, uh, can only happen to Star Trek too. Oh, you've avoided Star Trek. How I love thee and, and how it has been unwatchably bad. Now, let me ask you a question. Was uh, Star Trek Picard Season 3, and, and uh, to my mind as well, Star, uh, Star Trek Station World Season 1, was it worse that they were watchable and good? I mean, Picard Season 3 was just the gold standard. And it was really the best Star Trek I've seen since... Uh, uh, first Contact. E easily. Easily the best Star Trek since First Contact. It was fabulous. Fantastic. But does that make the, the, the rest of Star Trek, the reality of Star Trek, more bitter, right? Is it more painful for the uh, uh, stunning, wonderful beauty that was uh, uh, Star Trek because... Uh, uh, season three, or the final season, I like to call it. Just call it Picard. Don't even say about the final season. Just ignore the other two happen. Oh, because they all... Oh, man, I was going back and watching old reviews uh, from Red Letter Media when they when they were watching Picard season one and two and predicting it, right? And boy, they were right about a lot of things because it's so dumb. That's really, I think, the uh, thing I hate most about this Star Trek. Not the... Uh, um, the insane amounts of DEI they shoehorn in uh, in in place of story, right? It's not it's not that. It's just it's uh, um, so low quality, so stupid, right? It's so stupid, right? The idea of like I don't know a starship breaking into a million different starships and ah, <laughs> it's all like this universe. Oh, uh, God. Uh, so why am I making this video? A, a few reasons, mainly because um, Star Trek Discovery is starting up again soon. And genuinely, dude, I, I I am hoping for an apocalypse. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. We're hoping for, hoping for an apocalypse before uh, uh, it is. It could happen, right? It could. Happen. There's supposed to be what a. a it's really weird. There's a there's two lunar eclipses, one in October and one now, and they both ha they both intersect over in Texas over Eagle Pass, which is where the uh, uh, all the. Uh, Mass immigration, people are breaking in the border. What does it mean? Could it mean the end of days? I, I only hope so. Because I really don't want to watch uh, the next season of Discovery. And I'm going to watch it to review it as, as long as I can. I, I stopped with, uh, uh, what's it called again? Lower Decks, because that was that was just stupid shit. There was no, there, there was no reason to watch that, right? There's no The reason I would watch Discovery is because people who like Star Trek are somewhat curious to know how they're... Um, Defiling the corpse with their evil necrophilia, uh, and <laughs> yeah, and people kind of get no one's interested in lower decks. Like it's a cartoon, who gives a shit, right? And that's essentially the, uh, and it's an awful cartoon as well. It's generally all, as is all of Star Trek. I mean, so uh, uh, yeah, Discovery's coming back, and apparently, you know, they they're very confident there's going to be a um, a sequel series with uh, Tilly in Starfleet uh, Starfleet Academy. Oh, God. And we'll see when 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 we look at the uh, the trailer for uh, season five that Tilly is just like uh, she's becoming a black hole of like just density. She's so fat. There's like a a, a huge gravity uh, gravitational waves co co coming out for her, which you know uh, they could use as a big bad for the season. I just hate it with every fiber of my being. Right. Anyway, so here are three articles that. Uh, uh, Discuss the current state of Star Trek, right? Very, very shilly articles, and I think also a trailer reaction to Star Trek, um, uh, not Strange Well, uh, Discovery Season 3. And I tell you, that's another heartbreaking thing, because Brian Fuller, who was the guy who initially invented Discovery, right? And you could tell where his creative involvement ended. You could tell, like, he had the, the fan, what's the word, cojones, the fan gene, right, to, to come up with the idea of using the Star Trek, the abandoned Star Trek Phase Two Enterprise design for Discovery. That was brilliant, right? Uh, um, and I think uh, what's his name is Harry Mudd was also very good. Uh, Ray Ryan Wilson, the guy guy from the Office. I thought he was actually a credible good villain, right? I, I, I think they could have done a lot with that. But man, it's the Michael Burnham show and stunning and brave women in space. It's awful. 
it's all it's made for a tiny tiny uh, uh, group of people who are complete narcissists right complete and total narcissists that are self-obsessed in every way shape or form if they don't put what they're if they don't see themselves in anything they're looking at, then therefore it's evil and the people who make it are Nazis, right? That's really what they believe. So you got like these unbearably awful characters, was it? The trans characters, Adira and the other one, uh, who act like they've been married for 50 years and they're just awful, right? They're just awful. Everybody in Star Trek Discovery is awful. I kind of like Stamets initially. I like the show for the first six or seven episodes, frankly, until the Brian Fuller influence uh, uh, died down. Now, I like the reinvention of the Klingons. I, I thought that that was cool, but uh, uh, a lot of people didn't. I, I, people don't like the Klingons, but the bottom line is that it's just not Star Trek, right? It's it's so far from the Star Trek DNA. Here's the problem with it, it as I said. It's, as I said, it's being made by imbecile children narcissists, uh, and they need to put themselves at the center of everything, and they don't realize that they are not the center of Star Trek, right? They were, audience wants to move on. No, you want to move on. You want to move on to, and the proof that audiences don't is because they abandoned you, right? Uh, um, yeah, so the current state of Star Trek, not good. They say there is, uh, the strong rumor saying that, who is it that's buying Parrot? Well, no, uh, somebody wants to buy, who was it? Uh, somebody wanted to buy Paramount, was it HBO? Maybe, I think Warner Brother wanted to buy Paramount uh, and then there was just the Star Trek IP, and they were saying Apple. Uh, is it Apple? Uh, somebody, the, the Star Trek IP is up for sale. It's been devalued about $100 million, apparently, right? It's uh, well, it's up for sale. I just hope somebody gets it. And this is what I would do if, 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 I, if I got the Star Trek franchise. Firstly, I would make a tile on my streaming service called Star Trek, and in that tile there'll be garbage-tier Star Trek, which I'll put... What would I put in there? Obviously, Discovery, sadly, because I think the first few episodes were good. Um... Strange New World Season 2, uh, Lower Decks, uh, what, 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 I can't even remember what else they do. Picard Season 1 and 2, uh, I, I would just go, and I would, the title would say Garbage Tier, right? And I will just forget about all of that. So I would try and, uh, I, I would keep this, uh, Picard Season 3, and then move forward, right? I, I wouldn't, you know what, you know what would be really great? If they made Star Trek, what was it called again? Um, Legacy, which, they, which I don't think they're going to. But they made Star Trek Legacy, but instead of doing it at like eight episode season, 10 episodes, do a full 22 episode season. Because I think the the Sausage Factory of churning that out week upon week upon week creates greatness, right? We saw that with Next Generation. I think it creates greatness. And I think it's just lazy, these eight episode seasons, these 10 episodes, which they put, spend way too much money on, frankly. Take the budget for one episode of... Um, Strange New Worlds or Discovery, and give that to Star Trek Continues, right? The the Vic Montango one, uh, Montango one. You probably make ten for the, the, the same price you made one, right? Uh, uh, that's even paying everyone, not doing a volunteer. And you'd actually have good Star Trek that people would actually like. I mean, I'll greenlight an axe and I'll do all kinds of things. Uh, I'll beg Quentin Tarantino to do because Quentin Tarantino is the thing he's going to make ten movies. So I'll say, Quentin, mate, how about doing? A Star Trek miniseries, right? And you could do it. You have like the old uh, NBC logo, Desi Lu, the whole thing. Uh, uh, I would love to have uh, Leonardo DiCaprio in it as the, playing his character in Once, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Rick Dalton as the guest star, right? <laughs> that would be really, really funny. There's a lot they could do with that, right? So, Quinton Bate, wouldn't that be great? Uh, uh, but, you know, that's only in my head. That's only in what's, what's in reality? The the awful, the unrelenting shit show that we're about to see. So let me hand over to you. This is a few articles over the last week or so. Let me hand over to me over the past week or so. Da, 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 da. Okay. This picture shows you what the problem with current day Star Trek is. And it's not that it's just shit. It's not that it's predominantly a female brand that nobody likes right uh, uh nobody likes chick trek i'm sorry like that people don't mind chicks in star trek people do mind chick trek right they do mind it right but it's it, so it's but so that's that's one level problem but a much deeper level problem which i think is really really uh clearly represented here is how deeply narcissistic uh current day trek is where the, why they 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 really lean so much into classic because they want everything to be about them, right? I, initially, I thought the reason that they, you know, they did the Garden Forever, again, they lean into uh, classic track. I thought it was to legitimize them. 
And I realized, no, that's not the case. The case is actually, it's to, uh, uh, because everything is about them. And if something isn't about them, they hate it. Or they don't, it can't exist. So that's that's what this article is. It's making modern day Trek, Star Trek all about modern day Trek, which it just isn't, right? It's a total, complete failure, which actually is a good segue, right? There, There is some, very optimistic rumors going on that apparently uh, uh, Warner Brothers. Now, weirdly enough, I thought Warner Brothers were, were were on their knees, right? So they can't afford to buy Paramount, but they do want to buy Star Trek, the whole IP of Star Trek, apparently, right? So the complication is that Sky Dance is also trying to acquire a Paramount. However, so they can't, they won't be able to take them on the on their offer for. They made them a cash offer for Star Trek, like just. Kit and Kabuna, and we'll go into what that is in, in a second. Um, and uh, so I don't know if they can accept that right now because uh, Sky Dance is doing due diligence on buying Paramount. However, apparently Sky Dance isn't interested in their TV division, right? So maybe they'll be happy to uh, um, cut off uh, uh, Star Trek, which will be great, right? So, and again, although, again, I thought uh, uh, Warner's was in the middle of being bought by... Um, was it Universal? Universal NBC? I thought that was going on, but I, I don't listen until something happens. It doesn't happen. So, what? Uh, uh, um, what the, I hear a drill going upstairs. It's very strange. I wonder what my wife's drilling or my daughter. So, uh, um, well, okay. So, practically, it will mean like this that they, Star Trek has been broken into two licenses. You have the 2005, 2006, I think, beforehand. And then everything afterwards. There's two separate licenses, but they'll be combined into one house. They've got to buy everything, uh, and but they want to disregard all the Kurtzman stuff, which is great, right? So they, the only thing that that is going to carry over apparently is Star Trek Legacy, but it's not going to be a Picard sequel. It's going to be a TNG soft reboot sequel sort of thing. I mean, it'd be nice if they can seg it into. Uh, um, Start in, in in into Picard and kind of like fuse it together, or you know, just take the best from it and forget, like, just in the same way that Strange New Worlds just totally forgot its source material. Same here, why not? Why not? Uh, uh, but yeah, so that 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 would be fantastic. So, uh, uh, so yeah, so to be able to do that though, they have to be able to buy and pay off uh, Secret Hideout and Kurtzman, which, uh, if they're willing to do, thank God. Right, thank God, because there's, it, there's no unpicking, you know, the last 20 odd years of Star Trek from Star Trek. They just destroyed it. So I think they, they want to buy uh, both licenses and disregard the curse of stuff and move forward with Star Trek Legacy. I've gone through my plans many times. They'll smart, they'll get Quinn and Tarantino to do a, a, like a, a TV version as well. Right, they 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 would totally that that would be awesome because he says he's only going to make ten movies and the next month is his tenth the tenth he said but I'll do like streaming stuff and things like that I think that'd be great we'd do the uh, Chris Pine crew uh, Tarantino like a ten part eight part series something like that so what's this Star Trek uh, Star Trek eight best Starfleet rule breaking renegades oh. I, I get, yeah, the fact they put all these people on the front is so such an indication of how little they understand Star Trek. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, why do they break rules? Because the writers can't work a way, work out a way of writing within the rules. Basically, in Star Trek, following rules isn't always the best solution. Here are eight renegades who cut, carve their own path through the final frontier. Uh, who we got? Uh, fine. What's that? Michael Dawn as Captain Wolf. I disagree. Uh, uh, even I cannot stand against my own heart. Like, when did he, um, when did he break regs? He was very, uh, uh, rules or, uh, rule orientated. Right? I, I don't know what they're talking about. Fine. Uh, Star Trek regulations and the Klingon traditions that serve. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Wolf throughout Star Trek Next are no match to the strength of the Klingon heart, which Wolf embraces in his true guide, uh, uh, as his true guide in Star Trek D69. Wolf's love for it, Lieutenant Commander uh, Jesse Dak, 
Seriously, it's even start a Starfleet protocol. And Wolf's dedication to Starfleet, uh, to the Klingon Ember, means slaying Chancellor Gowron. Okay, but uh, yeah, what rule is he breaking? That's actually within the rules. Uh, is the right thing to do. So that's no rule. That, okay, what? what okay. <laughs> Have you ever seen this character? Uh, uh, what was it? It's uh, Enlightened Captain Wolf. This independent contractor with Starfleet intelligence as Wolf is uh, able to reconcile the best of, uh, of the Federated Klingon philosophies without being strictly beholden to either. Okay, they just wanted to have the character be Wolf-like, right? Best line of Star Trek Picard is when Picard, uh, Riker's going to beam down with Picard and Wolf says... And I will make it a threesome. <laughs> Lenny was Mr. Spock. No. I am sorry. No. Uh, logic and rules do not always go hand in hand. Uh, give me some uh, examples. As Prox was time again by defying both convention and direct orders, uh, in his early years, Spock runs away from home uh, regularly and elects to join Starfleet. Uh, uh, join Starfleet instead of Vulcan uh, Expedit ex Expeditionary Group. Uh, Spock's Starfleet career is marked with instances of Spock's own brand of lo logic prevails over uh, specific orders, risking not only his commission but also his life to bring Starfleet Iron and Christopher Pike. Uh, oh, I forgot they had somebody else pay him there to Talos Four. That's really one of the only times. And a penalty of death. Uh, uh, in all ways, Spock remains loyal to his ideas. Even even with controversial ideas like armistice with the uh, Klingon Empire and Spock's dream of Vulcan, Roman, and reunification, how is that rule breaking? I don't, I don't I like how is that? Well, I mean, it's not like it's a Zendaya uh, 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 costume. How's that work? Michelle forms as uh, Ensign Ro Laren. Yeah, so will rule breaking. She left Starfleet to join a terrorist group. All right, and then she came back apparently and blew up the one of the knee cells. That's it. That was good when the episode she came back. In. I liked uh, Picard's final season. I thought it was awesome. In the start of next generation, Ensign Ro Laren is a reluctant Starfleet officer who prefers to see the Federation resources used to help the people of Beja still suffering from a Kardashian occupation. Uh, like many of the Bajorans, Rose faith is strong, but instead of being Placed in, in the uh, genre, uh, Rose faith in her, her own convictions. Anson Rose, is willfully independent, speaks, uh, well, she was busted down from a lieutenant, speaks frankly without uh, regard for rank. And, uh, uh, yeah, exactly. It didn't work out for her and Starfleet. And then she became in charge of Starfleet security, weirdly enough. Um, uh, regard for uh, actually getting the things done. The attitude makes Captain John Luke Picard believe Ro Laren. Is a promising officer, and because because not wrong, but it also means Ro uh, chooses her own beliefs over Starfleet always, and I'll leave Starfleet right. Jerry Ryan as Captain Seven or Nine, I fucking hated. Jerry. That was one of the those are the best thing you could have done with Jerry Ryan, but having as Captain Seven or Nine, it was just dumb. It, it made much more sense as being a Fenris Ranger, and that was shit, right? Uh, um, yeah, look I, it, the. She was there nonsensically for member bearers and little else. Seven Nine's issue with authority began uh, with testing the limits of a newfound individuality opposing Catherine Jane with Kate, uh, Catherine Jane Kate McGrew. Kate McGrew hated, hated, what's her name? Um, uh, what's the name of the actress again? I can't remember. Super hot. Uh, uh, she's right in front of me. Uh, uh, in Voyager and Picard season th and and continuing to park Picard season three. So in commander Annika Hansen uh, is not Seven's idea, but uh, Captain Lee and Shaw Todd, uh, Todd, St Todd Stashwick, who was brilliant. Microaggressions, fuck off. That pushed Seven to disobey Sh Shaw's order. No, that was just like it. It was okay. It was Terry Metalis take on the current day trope of let's not follow any orders, right? Because famously Picard didn't once, and uh, oh, yeah, Picard didn't once, and Shatner didn't once, uh, Kirk didn't once. Twice if you count the Kobayashi Maru. And not even, not, not even disobeying orders. Uh, instead of sitting idly by, 
Uh, is there seven to five restrictive orders instead of sitting idly by when the Titan A can help uh, help people and takes my oh, stupid. Oh, so stupid. I hate it. Oh, so the equal Martin Green as Captain Michael Burnham. Yeah, she breaks all the rules and she's the best as ever. Sneaker Army Green's Captain Michael Burnham is the ep uh, epitome of the hero's journey, right? It's a hard, this is a, okay. You have the hero's journey in which a you know a young male character uh, uh, realizes that he is meant for destiny and he he works hard to get there. He finds himself a teacher. And he studies and he grows and he grows and eventually he makes himself into a great person. It's a wonderful story. Uh, uh, the Hura journey is that she was brilliant at every moment of every day, always. But men, evil men didn't see her absolute greatness. Oh, no. Uh, but eventually they were forced to see how great she was or die. Uh, as we learned from season two, episode one, uh, character Lieutenant Mansplainer. Fuck me, I hated that show. Um, and it, it, she doesn't even follow rules of any form of logic. So I don't know, uh, Michael Burden, what's she called? Michael is driven by a personal code of empathy, curiosity, and respect. She doesn't respect anyone, and above all, Burner will do anything to avoid work, compromising her moral integrity. She has none. Uh, even defy August. Well, that's immoral then, you dumb cunt. Right? I, I, she's like the worst officer ever. When tasked with uh, weaponizing uh, Tardigrade, Michael preserves its life. Uh, when told to drop uh, investigating the cause of the bird, Michael persists that she finds the reason and she's the best as ever and says that this is narcissism, like off the charts. That's just, that's all it is. It's insane, intense narcissism. Uh, Michael reviews and Michael Burner is willing to sacrifice a career, but she ends up being the best as ever. Her relationship and even her life in the name of doing what she believes is right. Oh, God, which, could she do it quickly? Uh, so it goes from being Starfleet's very first mutineer to saving the galaxy as discovery's captain uh, by stubbornly holding on to her principles. Oh, God, I want to vomit. Tawny Newsom as Lieutenant Beckett Mariner, the only character they could possibly come up with that was worse than uh, uh, Michael Burnham. I, I like this character is just awful in every way. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near this character ever. Uh, it might sound nuts, but Star Trek Lois this Lieutenant uh, Beckett Mariner. Makes herself an agent of cares because she secretly really does love Starfleet. Uh, Mara's reckless behavior is both an act of self sabotage to avoid difficult command decision and an open defiance at some of Starfleet's dumbest rules because Marin believes that Starfleet can be better than it is. Oh, fuck off. You know, it'll be better than it is uh, without you. It will be way better without you. Oh, God, I fucking hate this show. I hate it in every fiber of my being. Oh, by ignoring stupid regulators, uh, Beckett Mariner can do awesome stuff she was signed up for, like actually helping people explore the exploring new worlds in this in a Starfleet that's supposed to uh, this, the, start, the way Starfleet's supposed to. It doesn't matter she uh, it doesn't matter if willful insubordination lands Mariner the brig. Uh, Mariner loves the brig. Ugh, God, I hate this. Avery Books is uh, Benjamin Cisco. No. I, I, like, what? I've seen every episode. More than once. All right. Star Trek Deep Space Nine's Captain Benjamin Cisco plays fast and uh, loose with the rules. No, he doesn't. At the edge of the final frontier. What the fuck are you talking about? No. Cisco's uh, primary ob uh, objective is to facilitate peace with some uh, uh, means uh, of a little blackmail or espionage is in order. It definitely means ignoring Starfleet directors when following uh, them causes uh, following causes co more conflict with the S9. Give me one example. This is this is this is just retarded. 
this is totally disconnected from the reality. Of course, Cisco's worst crimes were committed in the interest of winning the Dominion War when uh, the ends are far more likely to justify the means. Broken rules doesn't mean uh, uh, doesn't matter what. Spencer and Cisco has already calculated the risk and decided the acceptable price to pay for the freedom of the whole Alpha. I die. What what rule? What's the name of this t- this article again? Rule breaking renegade. How is he a rule breaking renegade? I mean, she is obviously she's shit. And what's the number? Of, of course, Captain Kirk. How? I, he stole the Enterprise, right? Uh, I don't really record him breaking uh, uh, regulations that often, because if they did, he would be behind bars. Uh, as Star Trek's original fearless uh, leader, Captain J.C. Kirk doesn't actually break rules. Uh, no, Kirk tosses rules out of the airlock entirely and invents new ones. Again, you want to talk about Kobayashi Maru? I, I, he got a combination for that, for original thinking. Uh, like, uh, like when Kirk famously rewrites the Kobe Esmeru test as the Starfleet Academy to, uh, to trigger a win in an un- uh, unwinnable scenario. By the way, there was a book called uh, Kobe Esmeru, uh, which was way better, way better than what you saw in the uh, the JJ Trek, right? So what happened in the, in the book version is that uh, you were surrounded by Klingons. And when he said, this is James D. Kirk of the Sp- Starship Farragut, or whoever, whatever he was, in the simulator, he said, what, the Klingons go, wait, the James D. Kirk? He says, yes. And they all, they, they all back down in terror. Right? Much funnier. Much better. Why they didn't do that, I do not know. Reese Stevens, wasn't it? Judith and what it's like, Reese Stevens, I think, wrote that. I'm not sure. Um, from blocking away through a, a dangerous first contact situation, to ignoring protocols that would where, where did he, what when did that happen? That would just put his crew at further jeopardy. Captain Kirk is a quick thinking maverick who comes up with strategies to guarantee the Enterprise nay the galaxy's continued survival. Kirk finds answers the uh, where none seem to be exist, which is why Kirk remains a true Star Trek legend. This is this written by AI. I, this feels like it's written by AI. Is this a real person? Jen Watson. Uh, well, would you choose? Is that an AI picture? Could be. Could be. Uh, let's see if she's on Twitter. Screen rant. Oh, God. Well, there you go. That's the first problem. Facebook, Etsy shop. Oh, no, I bet she left Twitter because uh, uh, yeah, garbage people are taking it over. Custom order options. Let's have a look at her Instagram. I bet it's all like Trump, 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 ah, Trump, 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 Trump. Uh, oh, amazing it's not. That's a bad uh, Miss Marvel cosplay. What's that? I absolutely love the Marvels. Really? It was fun. Great story for all three leads, especially Carol. Which one's Carol? Uh, um, okay. Yeah, I think she's somewhat ideologically captured. Don't you? Uh, is this a woman with a penis, you think? Could be. I don't know. Look, normally you wouldn't ask, but yeah, we're in 2024. She's a cosplayer, I guess. But I don't know if she's a cosplayer with a vagina. I don't know. Right? I I, I don't know. And I don't mean to be a dig about it. I just don't know. That was a dumb article, right? So go... uh, Tend to start it to very positive you only notice on rewatch. Okay, well, let's find out what positives there are to that piece of shit. Unbelievable. Um, is it supposed to be an ensemble show? Okay, because Burnham does everything. Shaves the world, does everything. Uh, Star Trek Discovery's Dark Tone comes from Lorca's Mirror Universe. Yeah, we know. And you dropped it in the first season, and it's over now. Uh, Strange New Worlds exists because of Discovery Season 2. Yes. Okay, the Red Angel plan is clear. What, what, what was the Red Angel's plan? 
Red Angel Story and Star Trek Discovery Season 2 has a great way rewatch. So I, I, who can rewatch that shit? Really, as a well crafted mystery, USS Discovery is led to each of the Angel Seven uh, signals for a specific reason and in a specific order. Red Angel Plan makes it clear uh, sense when you already know the full picture from the first hazy glimpses of the Angel to knowing she's a biological, uh, the Angel's re relevance to Spock. Uh, and I. Uh, <laughs> Uh, an oval for Sharon is Discovery's turning point. Star Trek Discovery Season 2, Episode 4 changes everything. Well, I think Season 2, Episode 1 changed everything. That was like one of the worst episodes I've ever seen. I see. Is there anything in here that uh, can indicate what it is? Um, an oval for Sharon stands out at the episode of Discovery Discovery to change course for a more optimistic future. Oh, God! Georgia's return to the mirror universe in Star Trek uh, Season 3 matters. No, it doesn't. Oh, God, this one's crazy. The cause of burn doesn't matter as much as the aftermath. No, yeah, no, all that matters is that burn will save everything. A DMA is a better mystery than the burn. DMA. I can't remember what the DMA was. Uh, it just At least the burn had to call a name. You know, everyone's motive in Star Trek Discovery. Yeah, it's because it's boring. Boring as bloody hell. Go, go away. Go away. This woman is crazy. This woman is absolute batshit crazy. Fine. So this was fascinating. Picard season two was rewritten after Paramount deemed it to be uh, deemed it to Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Terry Metallis. Right. Before taking over a showrun for the third and final season of Star Trek Picard, Terry Metallis worked on the second season, uh, season series, which, be, uh, which came with some challenges, according to the executive producer. Five. Right. So uh, Terry Metallis was hired as an executive producer to work on the two final seasons, the final two seasons, I mean, season two and three, uh, of Picard. It was an interesting show from Michael Chabon to Akiva Goldsman, and they're all shit. Uh, together, the, uh, those three executive producers, along with writer, co-creator, uh, Kristen Byer. I mean, I remember her. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, I remember like people were like, who's she? And then Picard came out and it was awful. Uh worked out the in initial outlines for season two. Uh in his uh in his Master Replicas Collection Club Zoom chat in February, Terry Metallis said that the show was immediately under pressure to bring costs down after the expensive first season. Metallis suggested they could take a page out of Star Trek, uh page out of Star Trek 4 and incorporate time travel. And bring the characters modern day, which would save a lot, a lot of money. So okay, fine. So that's the uh, uh, that's why most of it's set in the present day. Okay. <laughs> His other thought was to bring back Q, uh, John Delancey, as he was so linked to the character of Jean Luc Picard. Metallus says that both uh, both those ideas were immediately adopted. Uh, this was all day one. Well, yeah, no, I do see that. Right, I think John Delancey was a great idea. The way they used him, dumb, right? The it's idea that he's like, yeah. dumb. But he's always he's always a delight to see on screen. Like like I like or hear him actually. I, I love his voice. Uh, uh, I the, 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 yeah. I think honestly, Q's probably one of his best roles. Right? He just has so much fun with it. I Fine. don't think I've ever really seen him in that many many other things. I mean, I was in Breaking Bad. He was very good in that. Uh, I've seen him in in, in, uh, in uh, <laughs> he was in he was in the final season of Torchwood, wasn't he? Briefly, he was in Torchwood. He was in Torchwood. I forgot. And about so that. was Nanar Visitor from Deep Space Nine. No, nah. fine. So another big challenge for season two was shooting under the COVID era uh, production guidelines. Just when things were starting back up in 2021. On top of that, it was decided that to film seasons two and three back to back. I did not know that. During this extended shoot, production was shut down for a week due to 50 uh, people getting uh, uh, COVID. How do they shoot it back to back and make season two shit and season three perfect? I, it's, it's beyond... I would say, I, I don't know whether, is that what Terry Metallis is saying or is that what? Yeah, this uh, this is the, the direct quote. COVID beat us up. We had to rewrite season two. We had to find ways to make things cheaper. So we accidentally burned air into our clock on season three because we were struggling. Oh. That's probably why it could go, go so great on season three. They didn't have time to think, 
right? Uh, like, <laughs> How can we yeah. fuck this up? <laughs> yeah, they don't have time for notes. Like if one person on the crew got sick at that point, the union rules is you have to shut down. It wasn't until very late in the game after we had shot the first half of season two before we split off to work on season three. You're running out of time. Okay, well, uh, elements like Q and time travel uh, remain. Metallus said the second season kept being changed and acknowledged that uh, he had an impact on, on the f- uh, finished script. Okay, so there's actually many, many different versions of season two. I think you can kind of feel when, when you watch season two, there's a lot of different ideas there. I did feel that. Like, it seems, uh, there's, there's the things with the Star Wars production model as well. You just get patched all different things together yeah. and try and, like, shellack it into one thing. Uh, these recent uh, production breaks alongside with different ideas add context for the second season, which received mixed reviews. Uh, here <laughs> mixed? On- <laughs> yeah, mixed reviews. Uh, no, they're pretty consistent. We all said it was shit. <laughs> so season two was rewritten because it, the first version was too Star Trek, right? So what? Uh, uh, we rewrote nine. Ep- we wrote nine episodes at one point. And the net was like, no, we don't really understand this. It's a bit too sci-fi. It's a bit too in Star Trek. It's called Star Trek, you dumb cunt. <laughs> yeah, I am like, bleh. Uh, Matthias shared some, uh, some details about the first version of the season when described on Paramount Plus, uh, asked for Paramount Plus. Uh, uh, there were Romulans and uh, there was a, a whole thing the idea that Gunner's Bar represented like a normal bar in Los Angeles, but if you know the right thing to do, you can go uh, into the back through a telephone booth, and then it was like Ritz Cafe. It was the stopping off point for all these different species that were actually on Earth with a do not interfere thing going on. So you had a lot more Star Trek happening in, in, a back, in the backdrop of it. Ultimately, the powers that be, that would have made it a lot better. As it would. That, that it really would have improved it. Uh, they were like, uh, B at the time were like, there's too much, uh, but there were some really good ideas that were pretty good. It's, it's a, that's a real shame. Why? Well, it would have been, it would have been, concept, it would have been conceptually amusing, wouldn't it? It wouldn't have saved yeah, the show. It would have, like, it would have grounded the season more in style. Like season two was a bit good when it leaned into being Star Trek. That first episode was very good. Second episode was okay. Last episode was okay. I like the uh, the the uh, Gerardi Borg thing. Like I thought she, uh, uh, some of that was good, but it's like well, as soon as you got into Star Trek immigration, I wasn't interested. Yeah. Right, that's when things got boring. Yeah, yeah, it was like that. Mi- the, the middle eight episodes essentially. So uh, where are we up to? Uh, well, this one anyway uncovers uh, ideas in contemporary Los Angeles. It would have upended a lot of star, uh, law of Star Trek when it comes to the first contact. Doesn't, it, it doesn't sound like it, it. It does sound like an intriguing idea that might be more successful with fans than the final version of season two. Probably would be. Of oh, course, cool. season uh, cool. season three of Picard was full of connections to Star Trek. Lore. It survived the studio sc- scrutiny. It's likely uh, the nostalgia factor and the buzz repeated with the return of the TNG cast mitigated concerns. Well, let's uh, find out more about that. Why uh, the uh, Girati ball didn't return? Because who give a shit, right? And like, it, it, she looked kind of hot in the red dress. But other than that, uh, 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 did, you, did you see season two? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Suddenly, she was like, she went from being a mousy character to having like this low cut, slinky red dress. Yeah. I was I'm like, well, okay, yeah. it was weird. This is a step up. Uh, also impacted by the change of the shooting schedule of the ball storyline where Dr. Gerati merged with the Bull Queen to form her own collective in the 21st century, which then returned to the 25th century to help Starfleet. Metallus acknowledged how this story created confusion that the Gerati Bull would have uh, replaced the Bull Collective in canon. He said the, the, there were scenes written for the season two finale that would have made, uh, made the difference between the two collectors clearer. Okay, so it was going to say... Uh, Jurassic Borg was there. Uh, there was a misconception that they were the Borg in general. The Bo- I, I, I don't really care. Um, fine. So there were two. There was there were their own strain of Borg. I, it didn't really bother me. Uh, Jerry Productions and Zuma Dallas and a group of writers split off to focus on season three. He says that there was work done to better integrate the the Jurassic storyline into the third season, including a di- uh, more additional dialogue. Okay, first season I'll talk about. 
so while Girati Ball was a, a, was the ongoing payoff for the season two, it was never really intended a uh, longer run a longer running thing. The last minute at the last minute we decided there was a hole uh, that there was going to open up and destroy, and they added in a burst of action to season two for now. Was it? I thought that was season one. We had like the hole in space open up and the evil robot space claws. Do you remember that? They were going to come in and kill everybody. Yeah, I think it might have happened in both seasons. Just <laughs> Probably. <laughs> oh, so man, those Discovery season finales were, were epically awful. Uh, I'm, still, I'm still optimistic that, that season, uh, whatever it is, five of the Discovery never gets aired. <laughs> When's it due to start? It's April, like a it? month or so away. It's like April oh. or something. I'm like, please sell it to uh, uh, Paramount or sell it to uh, Warner Brothers now. So it's a pound land. So it's, yeah. so it's a and like, off. Make it a tax write-off. It's, that's, <laughs> the, that's the way to go, right? And like, never have it be so, uh, so that'd be great. Uh, so they wanted to put it into season three, but we're way down the line. So you could say that uh, they, it was guarding the scene. We did have a line on Enterprise Ethan Riker when he talks about the ball transwarping conduit at Jupiter that was the one that Girati was guarding was a distraction. And the Queens were saying, go over there. Okay, fine. I, I don't, I don't, thank God they cut this out. Right? Uh, truly big show up to save the finale. I'm so glad they didn't. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad they didn't. That, that, that uh, uh, thank God. <laughs> thank God. We've got to look at this. Oh God! I can't. I, I I I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna watch and I'm gonna do deep dive reviews on every episode. Right? Uh, um, is it when, when the trailer when the trailer come out? Yeah. Copy link address. Let me down. Let's download this trailer. Hang on. Doink. Because I'm. Oh God, it's gonna be so shit. It's gonna be so shit. Hang on, and then find download. Uh, where am I up to? There I am. There was a rival, not friend. Yeah, I know. They said it over and over again. God. There's some advanced dumb country going on, right? Advanced dumb country. It has been a hell of a journey. And every bit of it has been awful, right? I, 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 Every bit of it has been as bad as having a fish shoved up your ass. But everything ends someday. God, not soon fucking enough. The discovery is my home, my family. Yeah, um, okay. What about your family? We've always been able to find answers together. Being a part of a crew, being where... I, I love cut price, I, I just help her. Where you need to be, when you need to be, that's Starfleet. Oh my God, there's Tilly. Man, she's get fatter every time you see her, right? It's unbelievable. They, they, they're, they're Starfleet show, Academy show, they want a uh, base around her. These uniforms are shit. Everything about this, this, it, this show is shit. And it's nothing to do with Starfleet. Last dance. I shall follow your lead. Of course you will, because she's stunning and brave and the bestest ever. Space Jesus here to save the day. The oh, God, it's soon. April 4th. Fuck me. What's that? Uh, 17 days out. Oh, come on, apocalypse. Come on. Listen, listen. Okay, can I appeal to the good Lord? Can I appeal to the Holy One above? I'm just saying. Listen, listen, this world is fucked up. And uh, we're not we're not gonna get any better. Bring the apocalypse now, but before this comes, because I don't wanna have to watch it, right? I don't wanna have to watch it. Greatest treasure in the known galaxy. Oh, British Do you think they're going on some kind of uh, season long uh, uh, quest? Is out there. Uh, I, David Cronenberg, right? Uh, one of the greatest horror directors of all time, being in this is just relentlessly weird. Right, it is like everything else with this show. Relentlessly weird. It's more important than you can imagine. Well, it's like that. She has the only the bestest ever can can work this out. We're on a search for one of the greatest powers ever known. Uh, was it the power? Is it the power of cake? 
because I think Tilly has found it. It could be very dangerous in the wrong hands. Ah! Blowing up! Oh, ah! Shit. This clue is the most important thing. We have to keep it safe. Oh, no, this is the most important thing. No, this is the most important thing. There's the most important thing. Uh, the engineers there because they've noticed that they're attracting meteorites, right? Me uh, uh, asteroids. And they're banging into the ship because Tilly is creating her own gravitational field. Oh, leaping! Let's fly. Let's fly. God, one of the shittest things in Star Trek ever. Not that it's so devoid of understanding anything, anything, anything that's about Star Trek. My crew, the family I found in... Oh, God, I hate them all. Starfleet, we may... Oh, Dr. Gay! Dr. Gay, and, and so was he raped by Kevin Spacey, this guy? Or was that proved to be wrong? I don't know. When I say raped, you know, maybe a little bit consensually. A pretty good team. God. Just look how fat she is. I mean, for fuck's sake. It's ridiculous. She looks like she's about to eat her. Fucking hell. Oh. Yes, I've got. She has to cry every week. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, God. It's been so long since long. I forgot how bad it was, right? I forgot how awful it is. And does Jody Sharp says Sword Ridges? Eh, a cute thump. Man, I have got to do that. That uh, somehow got to do that. I don't know why. <laughs> the final season. Hey. So, uh, uh, Alex Kurtzman was talking about this masterpiece. <laughs> Let's see what he has to say. Oh, so stunning, so brave, Vicky Thom. Discovery had to walk before uh, modern audience could run in the in the current Paramount Plus era. No, this the, 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 they they poured tons of money in it, and I still think that first seven or eight episodes was quite good. I, I other than having Michael Burnham and the boring um, costumes uh, uniforms. Uh, Final like developing the series from the conception uh, uh, to its fifth uh, fifth and final season will uh, start seeing fans in it, seeing fans in April. Since the return to television in the streaming era, Star Trek has been developed. Two live-action spin-offs uh, with Picard end in 2023. They got one good season, right? One good season out of that. Strange New Worlds got one good season out of that, amazingly. A series of uh, uh, shorts with very short treks. So that, you know why they did the short treks, by the way? Do, do, you, do you remember why? It's because they they made rules about the fan, the, the fan films, which were vastly superior. Again, why do I think... one? Why do I think... What do I think was one of the reasons Millie Gibson was far from Doctor Who? I think she was vastly superior to Shooty Gatwell, right? I think another reason is she exudes heterosexuality, right? And uh, that's not that's off brand, right? That is off brand. Uh, but they, yeah, the fan films were fucking incredible, right? They were absolutely incredible. Uh, you know, I I, I, I like Vic, Vic Montana's uh, Star Trek continues. I like the redheaded chick counselor they had on it. I thought it moved Star Trek forward, yet remained. Very, very authentic to the original, right? If they had any fucking brains at all, Paramount, uh, what, what do they call it then? CBS Network, whatever this, this streaming service was called then, they would have put those on their streaming service as content. Because they, they were good. They should have greenlit uh, an Axanar and put it on as content rather than seeing it as anime as, as a, a competition, right? And two animators, Lower's Decks. Uh, what's the two animators series? With lower decks and strange new worlds on the way with Discovery spin-off. What's the, what? No, there was a two animated series with lower decks and strange new worlds. No, strange new worlds isn't animated. What the fuck is it talking about? With more on the way with the Discovery spin-off uh, section thirty-one. So I the every, what the the word on the street is section thirty-one is the end of Kurtzman Trek at last. At last. Nothing is being done beyond that. But, man, we live in a world where Kathleen Kennedy is still employed as the head of Lucasfilm. Anything can happen. 
Don't expect logical reason. Why do you, should you not expect logical reason? Well, there hasn't been any around for the last five to seven years, has there? Uh, Kirsten spoke to TrekMovie.com about, about the series' legacy, fan feedback, and how augmented reality has changed the franchise. Okay. How Discovery boldly went with no other Star Trek uh, series gone before. Yeah, into making unwatchable shit. I, I am sorry. We had ropey episodes of Star Trek before. We never had unwatchable pap that, was, that put the logo of Star Trek on it while having absolutely nothing to do with Star Trek whatsoever. Uh, when it comes to the um, press that uh, uh, made since uh, the last Star Trek series ends, I think there are two things. First... There will be no modern age of Star Trek without Discovery. Why? Of course there would be. Of course there would be. There, I mean, there will be no uh, uh, unwatchable shit without the, uh, on the modern age of Star Trek. But what? They would have just come out with something else, you dumb cunt. Uh, whether, you, um, whether you loved it or hated it, we hated it. Everybody hated it. It kicked over the doors for, to do more, for more Star Trek. No, it was just the show. Right, they were doing Star. They couldn't care what the content was. They couldn't. It could have been Star Trek, you know, uh, 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 you know, ass flaps, right? Until they cared, right? It could have been Star Trek fanny juice, and it still probably would have been better. <laughs> uh, I... <laughs> Hello, I'm Captain Michael Burnham of the Starship Fanny Juice. <laughs> ah! Oh, and in a few years with AI, I will make her say that. Uh, um. <laughs> uh, the idea uh, was never to make one show that p pleased everybody. Now, apparently, the idea was to make one show that everybody hated, apart from uh, uh, just emotionally stunted weirdos. Like, uh, or uh, oh, yeah, P yes, P uh, you know, I I will. Uh, um, I'm willing to bet the people who like Star Trek Discovery. Would so if you ask them how would it feel if you didn't have breakfast yesterday, they'll go, But I had breakfast yesterday. If you ask them, you know, it's, what how what's your internal monologue like? They'll go, What's an internal monologue? People like Star Trek Discovery are like the dumbest fucks in the world, and they really are. They, I mean, and again, I, I'm not saying that with animosity, I'm just saying they are the dumbest fucks in the entire world. Uh, where was it? Uh, because everyone knows uh, no one size fits all with Star Trek fans. What? Have you ever heard of Star Trek? Or Star Trek 2, which everybody loved? And Star Trek 3, which everybody loved? And Star Trek 4, which everybody loved? And uh, I guess Star Trek First Contact and Star Trek Next Generation. Everybody loved all of those. Right? Everybody... Every every love Picard's uh, final season. What corporate bullshit are you spewing, you fucking moron? Yeah, no, you made a show that everybody loved. It was called Star Trek in the sixties. Did you not notice? Fucking moron. So I think the key was for us. I, I didn't want to uh, set out and build a Star Trek universe when we did Discovery, but that is in fact what happened. Well, why not? What? You didn't have the idea to build a Star Trek universe when you built it. Then you're a dumb fuck. What? And I'm really, really proud of that. You're proud that a corporate executive gave you a job to do something without you having the idea for it. Okay. And I think fans will see that there wouldn't be uh, there wouldn't be what exists now without it. Well, three three hearty cheers. Frankly, yeah, I would be really happy if all of this stuff didn't exist. Now, don't be wrong. I love Picard final season. Well, would I sacrifice Picard final seasons for uh, Discovery and Lower Decks? And uh, Well, yes, I'm afraid so. I'm afraid so. I would rather Star Trek was a dead franchise, right? I really would. I re and, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm afraid so. Uh, the other thing is, obviously, Gene Rodney had an extraordinary track record of representation on screen. And the original series set the bar. So, uh, and I think we quadrupled down on that show. I believe uh, we're very much living in, in its shadow. Uh, hopefully, he, he'll be proud. He will be disgusted with you. He will be disgusted with your pervertry, right? I, I, you know, like, I think it's always important just to demonstrate what they mean 
when they say uh, 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 inclusivity, right? I think it's always important to say that. To to uh, um, so I just just pick one of these random uh, uh, um, clips I got in this folder. Let's see what this one. Is. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, some things don't need to be included, right? Some things are better not being included. Fuck me. You show Gene Ronnery that, he'll be like, no, I want to die again. Let me let me send me back send me back to the abyss. Uh he wouldn't be proud of it. You you did literal shit, mate. Literal shit. Uh as far as if any uh, as far as if any of Discovery is driven by fan feedback. Oh, it's always a factor. We listen to fans a lot. Really? We fucking hate you and everything you've done. Go away. Go away. Oh, flush your head down the toilet, and it's too good a fate for you. We see that people are saying, uh, we see what people are saying, saying online. Nobody's saying anything about Star Trek online, apart from me, which says how intently shit it is. Uh, we talk about what it feel, uh, what of it feels resonant, none of it. What of it feels truthful, none of it. You know when uh, you uh, uh, was it? You always know when you you yeah. You always know when you what? You always know when you when someone oh, fucking hell when someone makes a point. You kind of feel in your gut. You, everything you've done has been unwatchable shit, mate. Right? You should have that in your gut. Right? Everything you want is unwatchable shit. Uh, that's a very fair point. So we're always open to feedback. Uh, I actually think it's a really important part of making Star Trek. You how again the disconnection from reality is is mind blowing, isn't it? It really genuinely is mind blowing. Uh, the EP admitted that shows franchise uses AR wall has uh, revolutionised how filming uh, filming every project. It's it's changed a lot. It's uh, it changes like every six months, and we're having conversation about how to integrate it into Starfleet Academy. Fuck off! Do not do not even uh, think you're going to make Starfleet Academy you fucking moron. God, please no! I'm again. I'm literally begging God for an apocalypse so I don't have to watch your bullshit. Uh how many how many episodes is it? One second. Let's have a look. Star Trek Discovery Season 5, is it? The Red Directive. Fuck, everything about this is shit. The Red Directive. Uh, Ten more episodes. Life itself is the last fucking hell. It's so pretentious. It's just so intently pretentious. Fuck me. Uh, um, Starfleet Academy, slightly different than we've done on Discovery, uh, and Section 31. It's a huge tool. No, you are a huge tool. What is a digital tool? Not like you're not a digital, you're just a tool. Uh, it needs to be uh, used very thoughtfully. Well, you're the wrong man to use it then. I think that what I might, uh, I think that what I like more than anything, is to create a world that feels grounded. Well, you haven't done that. If you like it, why are you running fucking terrified from that? When have you made a world that feels grounded? And sometimes you can make it feel like you're inside a video game. Sometimes, you, you, always, right? We're really having a hard time to make sure it, that's not the feeling. It's always that feeling, right? It's always that feeling. Oh, God. God help us. God help us, ladies and gentlemen. All I can say, go, go, help us. My name's Vila Beck and the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe. And ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. <laughs>